In this video I'm going to show you how to make a jig for clearing the eyes on axes that have broken handles or need handles replacing or whatever. You need to clear out the eye, this is the jig to do the job. Before I start, this is my take on it. I got the idea from Craig Roost off of the Facebook page Axe, Axe Junkies and also on the YouTube channel Axe Junkies. So all credit to Craig. Mine is slightly different, I've done a few little different things in it but the principle is the same. So don't get on here then saying you should have done it this way, you should have done it that way. If you want to do it differently, go ahead and do that. This is how I made mine and uh, it's up to you what you do with that information then after that. So to begin with I'll give you a breakdown on what you need or what I used. Okay so to begin with I used 14mm or half inch ploy. This is PWB as a opposed to OSB. The reason I use this is because I had some offcuts of it here in the workshop. So from an 8x4 sheet of ploy I had an offcut like this and this actually determined the size of my jig to begin with. So rather than ripping off new pieces I just cut the pieces to length and that's what left me with this and determined the overall size of it. Okay, so here's their sheet of ploy. Now, as I said, this was an off cut I had here, and that gave me a width of 9.5 inches or 24 cm. Okay, so that determined the overall width of each of the three sections of the main part of the jig. Now, to give me an efficient size jig, I decided to go with 14 inches, which is also 35.5 cm. Okay, so we're going to need three sheets of that, so one, two, three. So I'm going to go ahead and mark these out, and uh, we'll start cutting out them. cut the three sections here and as I said they're 14 inches long by 9.5 inches wide or 36 cm by 24.5 cm wide so we need the three sections of them that's the bottom which is the plate and the two sides okay now we're moving on to the two blocks which form the anvil part of the jig and this is a piece of stock I had here which is four inches four inches square or 10 cm thereabouts as I said, these uh, measurements are based off what I had lying around. I didn't get too fancy, I made do with what I have and it worked out to be very efficient as it was. So as I said, this is a piece of 4 inch stock. If you don't have something like this lying around, you could probably get away with some blocks off pallets. If you had a couple of them, you can easily make do. Change your jig to size and uh, see what you come up with. Anyway, I have some of this, it's a good heavy piece of timber and that's what I wanted. So, as I said, it's 4 inch square and I wanted it to be approximately 5 inches long. Okay, so I'm going to mark that out here now. With a pencil. There we go. 5 inches. And we're going to need two of these. Okay, there we go. Two blocks, four inches square, five inches long. Here are the anvils. Next of all, we're going to need to make our wedges. These are the wedges I have here. And for that, we need a piece of stock, according to my jig, 
which is roughly three inches. So it's three by two piece of stock. Yeah, which is roughly seven cm by four and a half. Okay, and we need a piece same length as the jig, fourteen inches. That's the 14 inches marked out. Now while we're doing this, to make the wedges, you're going to need to come from one corner to the far corner, which will give you an even split. Here we go. One side, the other side. So I'm going to get that cut and then I'll come back to you. Okay, here's my two wedges. They're uh, symmetrical, so it'll give me an even hole in the jig. What I've also done is I've drilled two holes in them. You can see there, and I've put in some paracord. This is just makes it a little bit easier to remove them when uh, you're finished clearing the eye. Okay, on both ends. As you can see. Now we have all the pieces that we need, and we're going to start putting it together. Okay, here we go, first part of assembly. So we start with your baseboard. This is the board that it's all going to be mounted on and you need your two blocks. One, two. Now what you need to do, just to keep everything ship shape, is find the midpoint on your baseboard. Put a little mark on the end, just for reference, and the same block. Now the way I use to attach these is just with some simple drywall screws or chipboard screws. And I just put three on through each one on the bottom. That holds it securely. So when the whole lot is put together, it all locks together really well, and it doesn't go. I know Craig Ru or Craig Roost used um, some treaded bar, I think, or some heavy duty bolts. I may have to go down that road. I don't think so, as I've used it a few times now, and it seems to hold fairly well. But uh, for the moment, I'm going to go with these screws. So basically, what we're going to do is line up the midpoint for the two blocks, back and front. Screw them together from the bottom of the baseboard. That'll hold it all in place. Uh, I'm going to do that here now, and uh, I'll get back to it. Okay, so I've got my two marks lined up, and I have some screws pre-drilled here, ready to go, so I don't have to hold it together while I'm trying to put it in position. I'm just going to drive those home. over and do the same on this one. I'll just line up my two marks, keep it all centralized. Okay, there's the two blocks all fixed into place. Now I'm going to start assembling these. This is a side panel.
Okay, so that's the jig basically assembled. Now while I was, after putting the first one together and thinking about it, I've made a couple of uh, changes. The first one I made was actually putting these holes and the paracord into the little wedges, or big wedges I should say. And uh, that'll just help, makes it easier than uh, pounding on them with hammers and stuff. Secondly, what I thought I could do is, yeah it's great to have it where you can move it around like this. Sometimes you just want to lock something down securely and for that reason I wanted the way to mount this in the vise. Now the way I came up to do that was to actually, first of all, cut a hole in the bottom. That'll allow any of the waste to fall through as you pound it out, give you a bit of clearance. Right? And all I did there was come inside here, the four corners with a drill bit from the inside, drill them out and then I just chiseled out the rest basically. I could have taken it all apart and jigsawed it or whatever, but jigsaw is buried in the back of the press and I had a chisel handy, so I just tapped it out in a couple of minutes like that. Um, so that's basically together like that. What I'm gonna do then, so I can mount it in a voice, is I'm gonna use another piece like this. I'm gonna mount this in the voice. Basically what I want in this is two pieces that are five inches long, same length as the anvil blocks that are in the jig. Uh, I'm going to cut them out here now. these on the underneath of the jig. Okay so here's the two offcuts battens. I've pre-drilled holes in them and I have some screws here, some decent screws this time to hold it in place. Um, I want these to be removable and that's why I've pre-drilled holes and all just to keep it all, you won't be chewing up any wood. So if you want to use a flat on the bench you can, if you want to put it in the vise it'll only take you two minutes to do that. Okay so I'm going to put these in place. Okay, there she's all chalked up in the voice, and here's the two wedges. One, two. I have a Collins uh, Jersey X here that the eye needs to be cleared out on, and I'm going to do that now. When you're putting it in, you want to make sure the pole of the X is sitting on one side of the anvil, and then push the wedge in, just to get it nice and snug. Then push the other side wedge in, then gently tap them in. By hand is enough.
Okay, here we go. It's all set. I'm going to time it. It's actually a little bit high for me here. I might cut down the sides about an inch and just give you a bit more clearance. But uh, let's see how long this takes. I have a 14 mil punch here and I'm going to pound it out. There we go. Done. Here's the waste. Now to remove your wedges, pull them out, and we have one cleared eye. 